welcome to Bishop Michael Masambo teaching ministry for powerful teaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Here, you encounter the pure and adulterated gospel that inspires and empowers you to work the works of God. For nearly three decades, Bishop Masambo has brought hundreds of thousands to the Lord in schools, colleges, crusades, and conferences all over the world. His ministry reaches out to widows, orphans, and needy in the society, providing food, clothing, and scholarships to learners. Get ready for a powerful message that transcends boundaries and impacts lives. And now, to Bishop Michael Masambu. We thank God for today. And we want to continue with our series on um, overcoming faith. The faith that overcomes. The faith that works miracles. The faith that does extraordinary things wonders of God. Remember the scripture tells us that um, uh, that's in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that and without faith it is impossible to please God. For everyone that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want us to read that scripture together. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. It's an amazing portion of scripture that should really guide the way we live our lives. So, let's read together. Faith, it is impossible to please God. Let us read again. But without faith, it is what? Impossible. There is no way you can achieve anything. It is all impossible if you don't walk and practice faith. Without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible for you to go to college. It is impossible for you to pass exam. It is impossible for you to have breakthroughs in life. It is impossible for you to live an abundant life. It is impossible for you to experience victory. And without faith, it is impossible impossible it is impossible if you don't have faith but it is possible if you have faith the scripture says all things are possible for him that believes if you believe it is possible if you don't believe it is what impossible that is a scripture look at how the scripture is marrying jesus taught us and said all things are possible with him that believes if only you can believe all things are possible with him that believes that's what jesus tells the father of that boy that was um, epileptic he says if only you can believe there is only one thing if only you can believe all things are possible with him that believes and now the apostle Paul in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 moves us a notch higher and he says and without faith it is what? Impossible. Say it loudly. Impossible. Without faith it is, it is impossible. It is impossible my friends. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And he says for everyone that comes to God, everyone, if indeed you are coming to God, we don't go to God with our English, we don't go to God with our Swahili, we don't go to God with our looks, we don't go to God with our suits, we don't go to God with our hairstyles, we don't go to God with our makeup, we go to God in what? Faith. Whoever comes to me, that it, and without faith it's impossible to please God who's, but who, that 
anyone who comes to him everyone who comes to him must believe must believe in two things what but what the, the first one is what, what is the meaning of the first is everyone that comes to God must believe that he is what does that mean present you must believe that God is present in your in your situation the scripture says he is our present help in time of need he's our present help in time of need so you must understand that God is present and what is the meaning second is that whoever comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him so the first is talks about his presence let me tell you friend one of the main frustrations of human beings is when you are going through difficult times to think that you have been abandoned but God assures us that he will neither leave us nor forsake us so he is ever present with us the psalmist David says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because thou O Jehovah art with me you are with me you are with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he is your present help in time of, of time of need if you feel so pushed out if you feel so abandoned if you feel so neglected that is when you are the closest with god he is just there with you when all men and women reject you when all when your daddy your mommy your fiance your husband your wife your your, your children your your family members reject you and abandon you there is one who promises to be always with you and his name is Jehovah God Amen. brother he will never leave you he will never forsake you you can walk away from him he will never walk away from you God has never walked away from his people it is the people who walk away from God God has never abandoned a human being it is a human being that abandons God God has never broken a covenant with any human being God but human beings have broken a covenant with God history is awash with all these testimonies of men who tested of the goodness of God women who tested of the goodness of God but then rejected God here we are being reminded beloved that when you come to him the Bible has used the word must. You must believe. If you cannot have faith, it is going to be impossible for you. One of the reasons why our lives seem to be very impossible is because we rely on other things other than God. The scripture says, cast is a man that believes or trusts or relies on a fellow human being. And if you rely on your father, on your mother, on your fiance, on your husband, on your wife, on your father, on your children, if you rely on them, I want you to understand one thing. Wonderful as they are, they are not immortal. They are mortal beings here on earth. The very person you trusted in today, tomorrow may not be there. The very person you trusted in, that he, when it could be tomorrow he will give you money, he may be sacked today. The very person that you trusted in may die and leave you. Adversity may befall them. Whatever they wanted to do may fail terribly. But there is one that will never fail us. There is one that will never forsake us. And his name is Jehovah God. He is a father who loves you with the most pure love. Your father and you, my father here on earth can forsake us. It is going to be 30 years since my daddy died. 30 years since he died. There are some of you here whose parents died. 
they can leave you. Daddy can abandon the family and run away. Mommy can abandon the family and run away. They can leave you to grow alone as though you did not have a father yet you have. But there is one. Jehovah God. There is no single day that he will leave you. There is no single day that he will abandon you. Right now because you, you are trying to figure out with your own mind some of you are wondering how will I go to college how will I do this everything you see it is impossible why are you seeing it impossible because you are operating in logic rather than in faith faith is what brings miracles it is not what you think in your mind it is what you believe in your heart even salvation doesn't come because you have mental assent to something. Salvation comes because you believe. Because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Christianity is the journey of faith. And those who identify and know that journey properly begin to live an extraordinary life a life of abundance and a life of victory many people go to church for a social club to have a sense of belonging so that when they want to get married they have people who can stand with them for their wedding there are people who go to church just because they want people who will bury them they want a, a church that will be there for them. There are people who go to church because they just want people to sympathize with them. That is the wrong reason of belonging to the church. We go to church because we have faith and we are a household of faith. We are organs in the body. When we get born again, we become organs in the body of Jesus Christ. Some of you are, are, are the, feet, uh, the hands, others are the feet, others are this and that. And each one of us has a very special role in the body of Jesus Christ. The reason why other people excel in the body of Christ and others are completely dwarfed is the, the difference is in our belief systems. Now listen, faith that works miracles, although that one we will handle it later, is not resident in the mind. Faith that works miracles is in the heart. The faith that works miracles. There are times, even me as a minister of the gospel, I'm praying for someone, but my mind tells me this is impossible. But my heart tells me it is what? Possible. Now, the thing that is going to win is what my heart, the witness to my spirit, will, 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 will prevail. It is not the noise that is in my mind. You must know that the mind is the battlefield. In the mind, there are, there are so many battles. Even like now, the way you are sitting like this. Some of you are, you are sitting in this meeting, but your mind is being bombarded. The devil is reminding you of someone who did you something wrong. You are in this service. I am seated here teaching the word of God in this holy presence of God, but still your mind is being bombarded. Because the mind of a human being is a battlefield. And that is where the devil writes to fight. He, will, writes to, he sets battles in this mind. This mind can deceive you. This mind, and many people who find themselves in a mess is because they relied on the mind rather than on the heart. That's why yesterday I was with, uh, with Kiplimo, we were in community and I was teaching to uh, some leadership meeting we were gathered and invited us to speak. And you know, the, even in giving, what does the Bible say? Give as you have purposed in your heart. That is the giving that will bring miracles. That, is the, that was the difference between the giving of Abel and the giving of who? Cain. Cain gave from the mind, Abel gave from the heart. And God received the offering of Abel because it came from the heart. God speaks to the heart. He speaks to the spirit because God himself is what? 
spirit. And so it's very important for us to understand. Otherwise you will be in the church, you will stay in the church for so many years, you will never experience the victories that people testify about. You will never experience the miraculous that people uh, uh, testify about. You will wonder what happened with you. Why, why is it that people are experiencing the miraculous and you are not experiencing? It is where your faith is. Is it lodged in the mind or lodged in the heart? Jesus speaking in John chapter 14 and verse 1. This is what he says. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't. Don't allow anything to trouble your heart. And then he says, believe in God. That is in my father. And believe also in me. That's in Jesus. So, your faith, although that is a sub, uh, the question that we'll answer later, your faith must be in God. It must be in his presence. It must be in his ability. Look at Mary. The angel says, Mary, you are blessed. You are going to have a child. Mary says, how is that going to be? Because I have never known a man. How is that going to be? I am not married. I have never known a man. How is it going to be? And the angel explains to her. And then finally, the angel, and then finally, Mary accepts the word of the Lord. And Mary says, May it be done to me according to your word. And then the, the angel told her, With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. What is impossible with men is possible with God. That's what God tells her. So faith is all you need. You have seen people, I've, I've used this example often times. Someone saying, if they see you drive, if they see you have a good house, if you have a job, if you pass the exam, if you've gone, you've gone to college, you have your certificate or your diploma or your degree or master's or PhD, they are like those who have. Those who have are not those people who are having money today. Those who have are men and women who have what? My friends, who have what? Faith. Today I may be barefooted. Just like the way I was several years ago. Today I may be barefooted. I may not be having anything to my name. But in my mind, when I look into my future, I remember those days, and I have given you an example, how I was living in that grass-touched house whose door was not even complete, made of tin. And I live in that leaking house. But yet in my mind, I had drawn my home. I drew my house with my own hands. I drew my house and I set it there. I made the parking for it, everything. And in my mind, I knew that is the house that I will live in. Did I have money? What did I have? Faith. And your faith must be turned around into something tangible. You must come to the point of knowing that this thing that I believe in is going to happen. You must come to that point. You must come to the point where you believe that this thing is going to happen. You might have sat your KCSA and scored a D+. Plus. But in your mind, you, you, you want to be that professor. I can assure you, beloved, nothing will stop you from becoming. Nothing will stop you. The journey will be long, but you will become. Nothing will stop you from becoming. That is what each one of us need to know and understand. And it is going to help you so much as a child of God. 
and your life is just going to be amazing and the thing here is just believe to believe is to take God at his word to up to instantly obey what he says when Jesus tells you walk walk when he tells you stop stop when he tells you go into the battlefield and stand still and see what the salvation of the Lord do it like he did to Jehoshaphat faith is amazing so our first question was what what is faith and what did we say faith is the substance of things hoped for number two it is the evidence of things not yet seen faith is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things not yet seen so we took one Sunday and explained a bit on the subject of hope hope what is your hope what do you hope to be what do you hope to have in life what do you hope to achieve in life faith is when you make that hope a substance when you make that hope a substance a woman with a blood issue she had it for how many years 12 years when she heard about Jesus and the Bible tells us that if, that she had spent all her money going to physicians to be healed what was driving her to do that? She had hope for what? Healing. But the day she turned her hope into faith, when she said, I will go and do what? Touch but the hem of his garment and I will be whole. What happened? She was whole. So faith is tangible. It's a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not yet seen. It is already settled in your heart that is going to happen. It doesn't matter. The opposition. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It is already established that is going to happen. There was a young man in our church that was introduced to us. Actually, he was not even a member of the church, but he was introduced to us. And he was a total orphan. And this young man came from somewhere around Ndivisi and um, his daddy died and the family members disinherited the children. You know sometimes the, the, the Luya culture can be extremely demonic. So this guy, this, the uncles took the land and just possessed it and started renting it out for people to and they give them money, they plant sugar again, and the children of the family of their brother are living like vagabonds. So this particular young man had sat his KCSC and he scored a C plus those days and he could not go to university directly. But he performed so very well in English, performed so very well in maths and in physics. So he came, I mean, someone introduced him to me and I, I looked at the young man and I pitied him and I took him to Kibabi Diploma Teachers Training College. But before I did that, I went to that home. I told him to take me to his family. We went there, I drove to their home and I told them, look, you cannot rob the land of children that are orphaned. Make them vagabonds as you, you get money from that land. And I told him, I'm giving you this chance you have got to give them their inheritance today or it's going to be a totally different story so they looked at me and of course it created a lot of fear in them and so they straight away called the young men and they and even the other brothers who had been chased away they went and they had their inheritance 
I took this young man to, to college. And I could see him in the future. That was my faith. I could see him in the future. Finally, he got married, I think, on the 17th of May, 2020. During COVID, that was a time when they could only allow 15 people in a wedding. So we had 15 people in a wedding, and the reception was at my house. And let me tell you, God has blessed that young man. I, I was even talking about him yesterday. God has blessed him so abundantly that he now has land, he now has a home, he's permanent and pensionable, employed by TSC, his wife is a teacher. God has, I'm just giving you the journey of faith, the journey of faith, how God can pick you from where you are, I mean, from nothingness and make you a responsible man and a responsible father and the owner of your own home and everything. Friends, you have a duty today. And I'm not asking you to do anything else. I'm just asking you to trust in God. I'm asking you to believe in God. I'm asking you to just take your faith and put it in God. You have tried for a long period of time trusting in relatives. You have failed. You have trusted in your own strength and you have failed. Today, I am asking you, put your faith in God. There are people who are born again, but their faith is not in God. They, the only th thing they did, they had faith in the Lord. Because the Bible says, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And they stop there. But everything in the walk, of, in, in the Christian walk, must be the walk of faith. If you are going to see miracles in your life, it must be the walk of faith. For us to be here, to be doing what we are doing, to, uh, to have accomplished what we have accomplished, all these things are happening because we walk by faith. If I walked by sight, I wouldn't be a pastor in Wabhonya. If I walked by sight, I wouldn't have even, I, I mean, I would be in despair today. But I walk by faith. And because I walk by faith, I have seen the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God. We, answer, we asked ourselves the second question. What was it? How does faith come? Now put up for us Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Re write that. Romans 10 and verse 17. So let us read. It is up there. Let's go together. So faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let's read it louder. Let's go. How does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. Hearing what? The word. the word of God. So faith is a product of the word. Is a product of hearing. What do you hear? If, like, and, and I can tell even sometimes when I interact with you guys. If you are this son who's, who lived with your mommy. And mommy is, was, is just this hopeless mama. I don't know what we will do. I don't think you will finish school. Your uncle James doesn't help. These people, those people. And your, your, your main thing has been, it is complaining and complaining and complaining. My friend, because of the people you lived with, the aunt, the aunt the, uh, the mama, your mom or your grandma, who is ever complaining? Whatever you hear either builds faith or unbelief. unbelief. Could be this example will work. Several years ago, a girl joined our church. And this girl, after the service, 
as usual, I greet new members of the church, and we sit in the office a bit, and I ask her, oh, what's your name? She told me, uh, are you married? Not yet. Do you plan to get married? And she just sunk. She said, I don't know. I don't know whether I will get married. And I said, why? And tears dropped from her eyes, and she said, because I had a child out of wedlock. You have a child out of wedlock? So you think you cannot get married? So when I asked her, she gave another reason why she thinks she cannot get married. And I told her sister, I want you to listen to me. All those things you are mentioning are the things you have heard from people. But what have you ever heard from the word? What does the word say? Behold, if one is in Christ, why couldn't you finish that verse? <laughs> If you don't know that verse, I don't know whether you are a Christian. <laughs> if one is in Christ, it's a new what? Creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, when you get saved, sister, you are not a saved Nasikoko. I don't know whether you heard what I said. <laughs> You are a hundred percent a child of God. A brand new what? Creature. The day you give your life to Jesus Christ, brother, it doesn't matter what you used to do and be. Jesus would have made you a new creature. You have missed a place where you should have shouted a big amen. You, you missed it. Let me repeat. Could it be your mind had gone to the market? So most likely you are in the museum. <laughs> this is what I want you to know. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you were declared a brand new creature. Amen. And God doesn't see you again in the oldness of your life. He sees you in the redemption that is in the blood of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. That's how God sees you. But you see, you, 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 you come to church and you look at yourself, how can you be born again and still walking around with the guilt of what you used to be? What you used to be is, you used to be like that in the, before you knew what? Christ. Now that you are in Christ, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's why some, some and that is why even in the church like, like this, in the body of Christ, You'll find a brother who comes to you and says, you will see, when we'll be having a seminar on marriage, and you know, you find a brother raising up your hand, a hey, past, uh, is it right for a brother to marry a girl who has a child out of wedlock? <laughs> Let me ask, is it, is it right for, for men who have impregnated other people's daughters to also get married? These girls just went out there and picked pregnancy and put in their mouth, their, their bellies. No. Or oh, someone was involved. Yes. And it was that brother, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was that brother. And, and I have never understood why men make their sins holy and the sins of women dirty. And sometimes, sisters, those of you who are sisters here, if you, are, you, you had a child out of wedlock and you want to get married, oftentimes people who will fight you to, I mean, with all, who will fight your plan for a wedding to that, uh, that young man are more than, uh, most of the people who, will, the main people who will be fighting will be fellow women. Fellow women will be, and come, and come, hey, Pastor, praise the Lord, Pastor. So, Pastor, you know, I just wanted to. So, Pastor, you have also allowed Kiblimo to marry that girl. Pastor, are you not aware that she has a child? And they don't know that when Kiblimo was in Kibabi, he also left some three children. Now, one of Fanana na yeye. Mapua ni yeye too. So. They don't know. The only difference between a man and a woman is that a woman carried the pregnancy. But that pregnancy belonged, belonged to how many people? Two, Two people. 
Now, how do we punish? Just like when, when someone said that if a girl gets pregnant in high school, they should be punished completely from school. How? And what if a form three impregnated a form four, or a form four impregnated a form two? Should he continue with education as the other one goes, uh, that one is just away? And I just, sometimes, you know, when we talk, we talk so carelessly. I want you to think as a father, if you truly had your own son, your own daughter, and because of her foolishness, she became pregnant. Does she cease from being your, your daughter? She's your daughter. So, what I was saying is this. Your relatives, your neighbors may remember what you used to be. But the Bible tells us that when you are, that, 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 in fact, in the book of, of uh, Hebrews, that God says, and their sins and their lawless acts, I will remember no. no more. God will not remember for as long as you are in Christ. The key here is give your life to Jesus. If you surrender to Jesus, let me tell you, so many things will not be in your life. So many. So many things. But where people think women and girls should be punished more uh, in case there was a pregnancy, that's a lie. And now, do you know what, mama and, and, and ladies and young men? Someone will tell you, don't marry her. Because she has what? A child. And you go and marry another one who doesn't have a child but had seven abortions. <laughs> now, if for you, the measure of holiness is in, and of Christianity is in whether she has children or not, you are deceived. You are deceived. But you know what I'm talking, I'm talking to you is, now, now let me ask you, why do people believe, why, why do we have that belief among the African boys and girls, African men, that if a woman had a child out of wedlock, that girl, you shouldn't marry. And why is it that we had all this kind, you know, why do we have all these restrictions only towards these women? Men were involved, they are never mentioned. Men are never mentioned. Why is it that women are made to be dirty? Why is it that women are made to be the only ones? Yet this was something that it was a business of two people. And we make girls look so dirty, look so unvaluable. We use so demeaning words. Demeaning words. Have you ever had someone calling, I have attended conferences for youth, and I said, well, come, some of you, Ni mutumba. Uh, mutumba because she has what? A child out of wedlock. That's the most stupid statement to come from the altar. By the way, whom did Jesus come for? For holiness, right? No. He came for people who are very holy. No. Just very holy. And when, when I'm to, yes, brother, amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. Whom did Jesus come for? Yes. Oh, you have forgotten. He came for who? Sinners. Sinners. He is the just dying for the unjust. The holy dying for the unclean. That is Jesus. He's very insistent. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy, what? Learn, and I'll give you Rest. Jesus is very clear. He came for sinners. To save them from sin. To deliver them. But there are people. You have been saved and delivered from sin. But they still want to see you through the lenses of your former mistakes. And your former sins. And the worst part of it is this brethren. When you constantly see yourself. Through the lenses of your former self. You see yourself how you used to be terrible. That is wrong. Remember you are a brand new what? Creature. So. Let us read that scripture again. 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans 10, 17. Let's go together. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now what you hear shapes you. Because words are containers of power. Words are containers of power. Whatever you hear shapes you. If you live in a family that tells every day you have a, a mother who tells you you are useless, you are good for nothing, you will never even sustain a marriage, you are a terrible girl, you are useless, you are useless non entity, useless, you will begin to see yourself as what? Useless. That is why many girls, when they have children out of wedlock, they lose value to themselves. They, something deceives them to think that they are not valuable. So this lady tells me, Pastor, I don't think I'll ever get married because I have a child, uh, a child out of wedlock. So I had now to teach. And then, you know, like I will begin another series after this one on faith, something that we have been mentioning called righteousness. You know, when you get saved, you are declared what? Righteous before God. Freely. You get declared righteous freely before God. And that righteousness makes you a very important person in the kingdom of God. That righteousness. It is the ability now for you to stand in the presence of God without any sense of shame, guilt, or inf uh, shame, guilty, or inf guilt, or inf inf uh, inferiority. You stand in the presence of God without any sense of inferiority. Because you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. But because you believe in a lie, people have told you so many things until you have believed. Just like I sit with pastors, like in these rural areas. The pastors in these rural areas think that because you are a pastor in the rural area, you can never have success in life. You cannot live and have success and raise successful congregation. I don't believe in that. I believe that right here in Wabuhoni, we are raising a very powerful congregation. A body of believers that will change the world. I have no doubt. And I believe that right from this place, we are becoming a force that nations will gather. Through, from People from all over the world will be flocking to this place to be partakers of the glory of God that is in our midst. I believe in that. But there are people who just believe. They have very serious belief system. I've told you this. Most of our people, like we know we had brother Jeff in the church here. who he was here for several days, nearly one month in my house. Do you know that many people, many people, like, many people in the neighborhood, because they saw someone who is white, Mzungu, and he was in our house for one month. What, do they, what is their conclusion? He left what? Money. That's, that's what people think. And they don't understand. You know, you guys have never understood that some of the guys who come from America to do ministry here are very, they could be poorer than you, but more, poorer than you, I could say. It is just because of their faith and they just took the step of faith. So for them to be here and we are providing accommodation, we are providing meal, it is a miracle. Jeff calls me always and with his wife and, they say, and his wife tells him about how the life was in my house and they're just, he's just mesmerized, that kind of a thing. So people will always, you know, if, uh, what I'm saying is if you sit with people and they speak negative things about you always, you'll never succeed. I'll tell you this. I've been talking to them young people who are in our team, Timothy with his team in, in football. And I tell them, you know what? What have I kept on telling you, Tim? That some of the young people in, on that team will be international players. When I speak that, what, what, what do those words do to them? Those words, those words begin to shape them and build them. And they begin to believe in those words. Mama knows a young man in the church uh, we, we, was, was called um, Kevin. 
And how every time I could tell Kevin, Kevin, you are an international man. And he doesn't have shoes. And today, he's a professor of the University of Wisconsin, Madison, United States of America. So blessed of God. I have seen words that I speak to the congregation. And that's why, if you are very careful, I don't speak cursing words to the congregation. I don't threaten members of the congregation. If you, someone wants to leave the church, watch a fire magani. I end it. I will never, I have heard pastors say, <laughs> one pastor is somewhere, I will not tell you where, was telling what to understand because he saw new churches were coming and a few members were moving to new churches. And he said, if you leave this church and you are a woman, you will never bear a child. You get pregnant, it is aborted. You get pregnant, it is a miscarriage. Now what kind of, which gospel is that? Did Jesus just ask to terrorize people? <laughs> Jesus did not send us. The gospel is called the good news. Good news. It is not something else. Now, so these are the things that I want us to know. Faith comes by hearing. and hearing by the word of God. So what are you hearing? What is it that you hear? What, what, normally, what is it that your ears are hearing every day? Because your faith is either being destroyed or being built. You are either moving in unbelief or living, moving in faith. Now let's answer our last question for today, which we, we were on even the other Sunday. What is it? How does faith affect us, right? How does faith affect us? When faith comes in your life, when you, you, you become a faith being. When you become a faith being, how does it affect you? We said in Genesis, right? We put that scripture up. Genesis chapter 5, uh, chapter 15 and verse 6. Genesis 15 verse 6. Let us read. Who is that? Abraham. Another version will tell you, and Abraham believed in God and it was credited unto him for righteousness. So what does faith bring in your life? It, it declares you what? Righteous. Faith declares you righteous. And what are the promises of God to the righteous? It says, I have been young. And now I am what? Old. Yet I have never seen a righteous man forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Now, do you know what? Because you are righteous, your children will never beg for bread. Amen. Oh, my friends. Let me repeat. Because you are righteous on account of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your children will never beg for bread. Amen. Because you are righteous, you will lend to the nations, but you will not borrow. And the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, all of you say, but, but, but the Lord will deliver them from them all. Now listen, friend, you may be attacked so many times, but there is always one assurance, you are victorious. Amen. So if you are today going through an, a challenging moment, Move your, remove your eyes from the, from the situation and just think about the victory that is awaiting you because victory is coming. Amen. You have victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that victory is real. That victory is valid. That victory is there. Amen. It cannot be doubted. In Romans chapter 5, let us read there and end there for today. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Let us read verse 1 together. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. 
by whom also we have access by faith into his grace we have access by faith into his grace uh -huh. wherein we do what we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God in the hope of the glory of God now listen we have been justified that word justified is also declared what righteous meaning you know to be justified is a legal terminology justification means just as if we have never committed sin just as if you have never erred you have been justified and look at what that justification does because th th that righteousness now connects you into the grace of God and once you have been connected into the grace of God you begin to live a supernatural life with the supernatural abundance with the supernatural supply with the supernatural happenings in your life people will be wondering but this girl graduated last year how did she get a job it is super natural miracle power of god they say but this girl is like this and like that look at where she's where she's getting married it is what super natural they say but this girl the doctor said that she will never have children but now she is having what children it is what super natural supernatural god will work extraordinary miracles in your life because of faith now i want to ask you a question this morning this morning child of god this morning would you like to believe in the lord jesus christ and for a miracle now i'm not asking about being born again because i know most of you are born again but here is my question how many of you want to connect into the grace of god for the miracle of the need you have the need that you have this message we are teaching is is not a theory it is a practical message what need do you have that you want God to do for you today you go to him by faith and by faith all things are possible all things are possible to him that believes what is it that you want to believe God for today I want to pray with you we want to see God work out miracles in your life this message was not just a story this message is the voice of God in our lives and God is giving you an opportunity to experience the supernatural in your life that you may begin to walk in the abundance of his blessings that you may live a life that is victorious a life in which the glory of God is manifested a life that people will look at and see Jesus Christ at work in you Amen. that life begins with faith I don't know whether there is someone here who is saying Lord I have trusted on people and I have been disappointed. I have put faith in people and I have been disappointed. Now I want to put faith in you, O oh God. I want to put my faith in you. I rely on you, God. And I'm inviting you in my situation. I am inviting you right where I am. God Come and lift me up from this quagmire. I want to reach to the heights that you have for me. And I'm telling you, he is going to do that for you today. Today is your day of the miraculous. Today, now in this place, is the hour of your miraculous. So I don't want you to waste any time.
and I, and I just want you to come and just kneel before the Lord and talk to him and I just ask that the congregation stands and those who want just to come you have something specific and you are coming to the Lord knowing that this is exactly the thing I want him to do for me that I will just let the guy play the keyboard no need for the praise and worship team because some of the members of the praise of team might be in need of this prayer I don't want to lock you out just come and kneel before the Lord and let's just have some quality time with the Lord and don't leave this altar with your mind scattered leave this place knowing that God has done it for you let's shall we be upstanding oh yes Lord and those who need to be, who just want to talk to the Lord just come it is your moment of, com of, of communion with God you just want to surrender everything to the Lord to your father just bow before him and talk to him he's your God he's your master he cares for you. He's concerned about your life. He's the rock of your redemption. He wants to get you out of your situation and build you up into a place where he wants you to experience his abundance and his miracles in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Father, you are so great. You are so gracious, oh God, and so merciful in the name of Jesus. I thank you for each one of these dear ones that have come to you. Lord, they have not come to man, they have come to you, God. Because we realize that without faith it is impossible. And with faith all things are possible. Because you are people, God, they have believed in you today. Let the, the impossibilities become possible for them today. Father, you are turning around every impossible situation. You are opening a way where there was no way. You are rebuilding those things that have been de destroyed. God, you are raising up your standard for the people in the name of Jesus Christ. You are raising up the standard for your people, God. You are raising up the standard for your people in the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, you are raising up the standard for your people. You are building up your great name, O oh God. You are strengthening yourself up in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest. We bless you and we honor you, God. We celebrate you for who you are and for the great things that you've done in the name of Jesus Christ.
So the journey of the miraculous has begun. The journey of the miraculous has begun. The journey of the miraculous has begun in the name of Jesus Christ. And that Lord, these men and women are walking supernaturally. Lord, they are from this day experiencing supernatural providence, supernatural miracles, supernatural happenings in their lives. Doors are getting open where there was no door. God, you are making a way where there was no way. God, you are bringing back to life everything the enemy had destroyed. Everything the devil had stolen is coming back into their bosom in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, you are bringing it back a hundredfold to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and we give you praise and glory for you are the Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more of such uplifting Christian content, please click subscribe. Click the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.